Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Join me right now in faith. Say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Everything I need, I receive from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. What a statement. What an invitation. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Telling you that God has might. And He's saying to you, be strong in the ability of that might. You know, when we say might, we in governance, for example, we talk about federal might. You know, someone say, oh, he used federal might to defeat me. What's he saying? Oh, he had control of the federal army. He had control of the federal apparatus. And that's what he used, meaning he overpowered me by the greatness of his might. So now he's saying to you, Paul is saying to you, be strong in the power of God's might. What does that mean? Take advantage of the power of God's might. Take advantage of God's ability and strength. Take advantage of what you know that God your Father can do. Be strong in it. What does it mean be strong in it? Act like, you know, I'll give you an example. If you know your Father loves you so much and your Father has access to anything that you would desire and you are known as the son you know how you're going to take advantage of things in life you are going to make plans you are not going to make small plans you are going to make plans according to the power of your daddy's might if your daddy takes you shopping you are not just going to look and say no what let me just take just one sweet you know what he can do. But there are people like that. He said, no, I don't want anything much. I just want to like, sorry, are you sure? Are you sure? Many years ago, I was taken to a restaurant. Now, I didn't know that it's, um, no one told me. I didn't know it's many years ago that it's a standard price for anything you eat in that restaurant. So I was thinking, you know, not just me now, I was thinking with three of us, so I was, I was called to join them. So I went for that, went for a meeting, and then the meeting held in the restaurant. Now I knew I was not the one that was going to pay because I was invited to it. So it, it, I knew the host of the meeting was going to pay. So when I got there, they were like, oh, you can order for anything, just eat. And because the people I went with, they were much elderly than myself. So I had to form, I had to behave myself. I said, no, you know, I mean, I don't want to take anything. So like, I'm not, I'm not really hungry. And they were like, they kept like, no, but why don't you take something? So I said, okay, I just took bread and soup that's all i had 
and then I took I think something can't remember now many years ago juice or something like that like is that all you want to eat I, I say I'm full I'm not and not because I was full I was just trying to respect myself and behave myself so we finished the meeting and the person that took me to the meeting while we're leaving he now said that but um why didn't you eat because the man had paid for the food i said yeah that's why i didn't want to eat more so he shouldn't spend he said no it's a standard price for us holding our meeting there he had paid and when i heard the amount that was paid dear lord jesus i felt like going back and say hold on <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Like, come on now. I, we have not finished. <laughs> but we had left already. Praise God. Yeah. So, so, you see, I didn't take advantage of the minds of our host. That was simply what I didn't do. I was given the, now you know, the, the, the freedom but because I did not understand the power of his might, so I, I just decided to, you know what, just, just behave yourself. Now, no, of course, not because, not that if I had known, I would have torn the gloat on, no. But of course, you would have eaten something good. Now, that's how a lot of times we act where God is concerned. Because first and foremost, we don't know how powerful our God is. We don't know. And two, we have not come to that place where we feel we personally can take advantage of him. So he's telling you here is, what he's telling you is, be strong in the Lord and be strong in the power of his might. God who's backing you up is so powerful. So the next verse says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, your father is there, but then also he's reminding you that there is the devil there also. So he's giving you an instruction on what to do. Put on the whole armor of God. Take it off. Why? So the devil, when he throws his wiles at you, you will be able to withstand. Satan throws his wiles to shift you from your standing point. And one of those things he throws at you are lies so that you will not take advantage of the power of God's might. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle human beings. The people you see standing before you, they are not your problem. Trust me, they are not your problem. He said, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places these are the things that we deal with principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this age now, it's instructive that he said, rulers of the darkness of this age. Rulers of the darkness of this age. Now, it lets you understand the operation of Satan. Satan updates his software more than you update your software on your phone. In every age, he sets up a ruler over the darkness. Now, he is the king of darkness. So in every age, now when you say every age, in every sphere of life, in every um, season, he sets up a darkness 
that will blind the eyes of the people. That's how he's been able to rule for this long. And because God's children do not understand. Now when I mean God's children, I'm not just saying only those that are born again. I'm talking about mankind created by God. Because they don't understand these things, they come into a world that is already prepared for them, so to speak. Now, God has prepared all things for us. But you see, He called us to walk with Him, just like the Garden of Eden. God told them, look, I want you to fix this garden up. How are they going to fix the garden? They are supposed to rely on him for wisdom daily as they walk. But Satan comes right there and covered that place with his darkness. And they accepted his darkness. And by accepting his darkness, Jesus, remember, said you cannot serve two masters. You either love one and hate the other or obey one and despise the other so if you're obeying one surely you are despising the other so i say no i didn't plan to despise him but you chose to obey the other one so that has always been the challenge the challenge of trying to serve two masters it can never work so when satan set up his darkness and Adam and Eve fell for it and began to walk in it rather than staying in the light that God had already given to them. The whole earth became chaotic. And Satan began to operate over the world with that same darkness. Giving them sight. He was the one that told them what it means to be naked different from what God had already told them. And they believed him. See, that's always the challenge. The challenge is always who you choose to believe. Satan is always speaking. God is always speaking. Not because they are both in competition. No, they are not. Satan knows God is always speaking. As I told you earlier, he updates his software as quickly as anything because he knows that God is always working he knows God is always on the move so if you as a child of God cannot keep up to your father's pace the darkness will snatch you if you don't hear the voice of your father and you don't follow the instruction that he gives you day by day, time by time, you will be walking in the darkness. If you don't hear specific instructions from God, when God releases his word to us, he's releasing light to our spirit. And that light that he releases, when we choose to walk in it, we overcome the darkness in the world. There is no darkness in this world that cannot be overpowered. We are not actually trying to overpower the darkness. Hear me? The Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend the light. That's how simple it is. I was describing that a few days ago. So imagine Peter was in prison. Chains. And an angel appeared in that prison, tapped him. The angel did not bring a key to unlock the chains. No, he didn't. He tapped him and says, get up. Peter got up. The moment Peter got up, 
the chains fell from his hands, fell from his legs. What do you think happened? Those chains were made in darkness. And when those, when those chains saw light, they couldn't but give way. They walked out of that prison. And the Bible says they got to the gates leading to the city. And the gate opened on its own accord for them. What do you think was going on? Light was controlling the darkness. Now, this is the truth about everything that has to do with your life. It is not how strong the darkness is. It is not how strong the challenge looks. It is how well you are convinced of the light that you have received. If you receive that light and choose to walk in it, there is no darkness. So when you begin to hear that, look, the world is going to get through an economic crisis, they are speaking of their darkness. But there is one walking word every child of God must carry. And, and, and I'm going to leave you with that today. Is God with you? Now, I know he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That is a sure promise. But then the question is, do you know that he is with you? Are you convinced in your heart that he is with you? Are you convinced? You have a short time to get this thing sorted out. And this is what the Lord told me many years ago concerning that scripture. He says, son, the reason I'm with you is to always tell you what to do. Oh, that gave me so much liberty in my heart. Why is God with us? So that the enemy will not see us. God doesn't stop the enemy from coming close. Haven't you noticed that? He doesn't stop the enemy from coming close. The coming close of the enemy has never been the problem. So the same thing when you know God told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Satan began to give words to God. Say, look, touch him, put your hand and touch him and see if he will not curse you. Did God oppose? No, God says, go. I'm giving you everything that has to do with him. God didn't say, if I catch you near my servant Job, you think that's why I was calling you? No. There is no time God have blocked Satan from coming close. Think about Jesus himself. Fasting and praying. That should be the holiest moment in your life. But who was the first person he interacted with in that fasting and praying that we read about? Satan. Imagine fasting 40 days and 40 nights coming out and the first person that you're having, having dealings with is Satan bringing suggestions to you. Someone without understanding would think that was God speaking to him. But Jesus knew the voice of his father. And it's the same thing that I say to you. So the confidence that we have when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, is this. He will always tell us what to do in any situation. So what's going to happen next year? He will tell us what to do. What's going to happen in five years time? He will always tell us what to do. This is our rest. This is our confidence. And I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that your heart will be established in this truth. That your heart will be established in this finding that God is with you. That God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I pray that your heart be established in this truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.